The weather is absolute trash today, but we got parts to get, so we're gonna make it happen. So in yesterday's video, I showed you guys that the axles that I have for the VR5 do not fit into the axle flanges on the VR6 trans we pulled yesterday, the O2J, because that one has the 108 millimeter flanges and I need the 100 millimeter flanges to actually fit the Mark III axles onto that trans. But right here we have a Mark IV. This one has the two liter with the O2J trans and down there are the 100 millimeter axle flanges that I need. So today we need that one and that one and it's gonna be lots of fun but we need them and then for anyone who's wondering why don't just use this transmission here with the proper axle flanges for my vr5 uh the reason being the four cylinder transmissions the o2j ones have a different bolt pattern so this transmission will not fit in the vr6 or the vr5 only the axle flanges are interchangeable so the way we're going to do this is first get the car up in the air so we actually work on it and then we need to pull both axles out by removing the axle nut on the outside and then the bolt holding the axle to the flange once both axles are out of the way there's one allen bolt in the center i'm not sure what size it is um but once that one is out i believe we can just tap the flanges out after that i think it's that simple but we'll see i wanted to show you guys this real quick so the part number we're looking for for the 100 millimeter axle flanges is this one right here the o2a 409355d now this trans here is a 1.8 turbo o2j we pulled uh, last week but this one here you can see the part number is right there inside the flange and this one's o2a 355g so it does not match that one so this is also the 108 millimeter flange which eventually I'll have to change out as well but i just want to show you guys that's the part number you want there for the 100 millimeter and then right there is the part number and where you find it for the uh the 108s so after a little bit of maneuvering we now have the car up in the air and i'll show you all the good stuff down here if we look right here on the bottom you can see where it says o2j right there on the trans and then you can see also as well these smaller axle bolts meaning the 100 millimeter flanges so axle bolts to the flange must come off axle nut here must come off pull the entire axle out and then i want to say it's like a five or six maybe even bigger than that allen in the center and then pop the whole flange out and then repeat the process on this side and then we're good to go all right so both axle nuts are off on both sides now we're going to use the eight millimeter triple square to go ahead and get the bolts in here off the inside that's another way you can tell the um, larger spline 108 flange has the 10 millimeter triple square bolts and the smaller 108 has the um, the 8 millimeter ones. We'll blast these out real quick and we'll be right on our way. Easy money. So once you have the axle nut off, the bolts from the axle to the flange off, and the three bolts on the bottom holding the control arm to the ball joint, you can pull this away like this. We're going to get our hammer and tap this out. It's a little bit stuck in there. Maybe a lot stuck in there. Hang on. There it is. Now she's moving. Once you tap it through, pull out the back side and axles out of our way. And now the fun part begins of getting that flange off. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's like one six millimeter Allen in the center. Uh, blast that out. I think it just pops free. We'll see. All right, so I can confirm the center Allen key bolt right there is a six millimeter Allen. It came off very, very easily, and I'm pretty sure I can just walk this out now. Oh, yeah, that was easy as ever. Give it. Give it. There it is. Bam. 100 millimeter flanges and the part number inside there. Kind of covered in grease, but you can see the 355D right there. So exactly what we need. That was easy. Literally one bolt, and it, like, pops out. I'm going to have to try it. Look at that. Looks to be in good shape, so we should be good to go. boys we got them you see the part number right there o2a 355d all the splines look good not bad 
Honestly, this was much easier than I expected. Nothing really fought me, so there we go. Now our Mark III axles will fit into our O2J from the VR6, and we are all good to go. I also just want to say, for anyone who's keeping track of the days, you'll know tomorrow this girl is coming home. The Pink Floyd Golf comes home tomorrow, and I cannot wait. Actually, thinking about it, by the time you guys watch this current video, the Pink Floyd should be at home already. Oh, man. Cannot wait to have the 1.8 in this thing. This is going to be sick. One more day, boys. One more day day so if you missed yesterday's video this is the o2j five-speed transmission we pulled off the vr6 yesterday this is the one that's going on to the vr5 but these here are the larger 108 millimeter flanges which don't fit the mark three uh two liter axles which is why we have those ones so now i'll swap onto here all right we've got our six millimeter allen right here and hopefully these ones pop off just as easy as those ones did all right let's hope this comes off nice and easy like the last ones did <coughs> oh, look at that I love these things. They take no effort and they come right off. So there is our larger 108. Here is our smaller 100. You can see this one fits right inside there. And then the part number should be on here somewhere. Uh, I'm right down the back. 355A versus our 355D. This is the one you want. So our splines look to be the same. Make sure this goes right in there like it's supposed to. Look at that, no problem. So now we've gone from the larger one to the smaller one. The Mark III axles will work. That's sick. Honestly, this is a really easy swap to do. I mean, you get the axle out of the way, but I mean, this bolt takes two seconds to pop right out and then just out and in. That's simple. I like that. But for now, I'm just gonna put this bolt in here. I don't know if I can ever use that one, if it matters or not, or what the torque spec is for this bolt, but it can't be very high because like on both cars, it took almost no effort and they broke for like nothing, so we'll see. All right, one more side to do. I love it, they take no effort. Makes me so happy. Pull it out nice and easy. Number 108. Swap into the good old 100s. Right in like that. Bam. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and look up the uh, torque spec for this, and then we'll get them uh, bolted down. But just like that, we've gone from the larger 108 down to the 100s, and now it'll work with the Mark III, no problem. Honestly, this is one of the easiest things I've ever done. This took, honestly, no effort. This was fantastic. Now, just to confirm all the research we did was correct, I have a two liter axle from Miley. You can see that this one now fits properly into the 100 millimeter flange, whereas with the 108 here, it's much too large. So what we did is right, and this is the one you want. Again, it's 355D for the part number. You can get these out of um, 2 liter Mark IVs, TDIs, if they have the O2J trans. Some have the O2A tire, so be careful, but they still might work. And I think some early model 1.8 Ts, maybe. But at least for the 2Os, that's what you want. That's what you need. Good to go. Let's see what we got in the good old Bentley. Now, this is for Mark III's and not Mark IVs, but I'm assuming that one little bolt from the flange to the transmission is probably the same between both, so we'll see. So I found this diagram here, which is in 30B. This is of the O2A uh, Mark III VR6 trans, um, but this one is showing the pieces like inside the transmission, but not actually that bolt. And then I found this one as well, but again, not showing um, a diagram for that bolt. So unless I miss it in here, but I don't quite see anything for just that bolt torque twice. Actually, you know what? It's probably in axles. I'm in the wrong spot. It's probably, where's axles at? It's probably in axles. Let's go, let's go here. I bet it's over there. All right, well, I have nothing. So this is the axle diagram, but it stops here, which is the side that mounts to the flange, but not the bolt that I need. And then I found this in the diff and final drive. Um, this is for the O2A. It's showing how to pull it out. But reading through this, it doesn't show a bolt inside of the flange itself. Um, it describes it differently. So I'm thinking the O2A might be a little different than the O2J. And it doesn't seem to have that center bolt that I pulled out because I don't see it anywhere. This is showing how to pull the flange out, but it comes out differently than the O2J. Um, I tried looking online and I can't quite seem to find the bolt that I need, which is that center one. So I don't know if any of you guys know what that center bolt, I mean, I could just tighten it down and call it a day, but I don't want that piece coming loose inside the trans kind of a pain to get to. So if anyone knows that center bolt that I need, again, this one that is right inside of here, 
holding the flange to the transmission. If you know the torque specs or if you can reuse it or if it matters at all, let me know. They weren't very tight, but I just wanna know. Okay, so disregard everything I just said because I found it. So on the very last page of diff and final drive in the small little note section here, it says drive flange to diff housing 25 newton meters or 18 foot miles of torque. So now I know what the correct terms were, drive flange to diff housing. So I searched online and I found on Vortex, this is for the actual Mark 402J. Uh, same thing, you can see right here, it says 18 foot pounds. So we now know they're the same between Mark 3 to Mark 4. Kind of hard to find, I just missed it all together, but there it is. 18 foot pounds for the drive flange to diff housing Mark 3 and then Mark 4, all the same. We're good to go. So with these ones, since they are spring loaded, I'm gonna give it a nice push here and turn as I go in. That way it threads up, and then you can go ahead and spin it down. And we will go to 18 foot pounds. All right, so both of these are torqued down. We are officially done. The transmission is now ready to accept the Mark III axles. All we have left to do is paint the transmission and it's ready to go in the car. Not gonna lie, I am getting more and more excited because we are so close to putting the VR5 into the Savoy. The car will run this month now it might not go anywhere because i don't have axles still or brakes or that kind of stuff but the car will run and it's gonna sound amazing my clutch kit all my parts are ordered should be at steve's house on the 9th and then probably another week or so to me but boys it's coming together the vr5 savoy is coming together and i'm loving it like i said before i don't have a massive massive channel here i can't always do projects like this super super quick but they will get done might be a little bit slower but they will get done also quick side note you can't really see it but the gti is sitting right over there i was honestly surprised just about everybody said keep the gti so it is staying i don't know the plans for the car but it does have a super cool story and it's a very clean car so for now she's staying hope you guys enjoyed today's video hope you're excited about the continued progress we're making on this car do not forget be thankful for every single day we'll see you guys next time peace